Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your hostess, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So here I'm going to play a clip of a young lady talking about how impossible it is to be for a, a good, for a single mother to be a good parent, basically. And I'm going to play it. You can listen to her line of thought about it, and then we're going to come back and talk about it, especially in the light of a certain somebody choosing to become a single mother. So without further ado. It's impossible to be a good parent unless you have two parents in the home. It's not impossible. Or you can't be a good single mother. Because if you have to work and pay the bills and be a mother, it's you can't have be good at, at a job and then good at being a mom. Because when you get home, you're tired from your job and your kid wants all your attention and you just can't give him what a stay-at-home mom who doesn't have the pressures of bills can give her child. I agree. It's impossible to be a good parent unless you have two parents in the home. It's not impossible. Or you can't be a good single mother. Because if you have to work and pay the bills and be a mother, it's you can't have be good at, at a job and then good at being a mom. Because when you get home, you're tired from your job and your kid wants all your attention and you just can't give him what a stay-at-home mom who doesn't have the pressures of bills can give her child. I agree. It's impossible. Okay. So I think the first thing that we need to examine is what she's saying. She's not saying that you don't love your child or that you've got to be a horrible person to your child. What she's saying is your energy, your time, your thoughts, your all of the, these things are too divided so that you set in such a way that you can't really focus the energy to your child in nurturing your children and things of that nature. Like you can't focus your energy to it because as a single mother, as opposed to a wife that maybe still has a job or whatever, there's no help. So everything actually falls on your shoulders, everything. There are no, um, there's no other person that's going to be worried about what, goes on in your house, what bills got paid, what bills didn't get paid. The problems that come up, they're up to you to problem solve. There's no husband there to do this. Now, at first you could say, well, this is a woe is me type of thing or whatever. But if we know, okay, before I get into that, I want to go to the other thing that she said. She said, single mothers can't focus on their children like stay at home mothers that don't have the pressures of bills. Here we come back around to married women shouldn't be working. Only if your husband's income is to a level where working is not necessary for you. Like your any money you bring in is not the household and its maintenance is not predicated on any of the money that you bring in as a woman. Um. If your husband is in such a situation of financial stability that you don't have to work, it's still my opinion that a woman should find something to do, even if it's not working outside of the house, right? You could be working for your husband or with your husband or just finding a hobby, just find something to do. I don't really believe in just nothing, just finding nothing to do because children go in, they grow in stages. You know, when they're very small, they need all of your attention. That's when you really should have that stay at home thing. So it, let's say in a situation where you're married, you first have a child. If your husband's finances are in a space where you don't got to, he can sit you down at least for a while. You should sit down for that time period and nurse and nurture that baby. Because I, I, I really hate seeing really small kids in daycares and stuff so if you're in a position where you can do that you need to sit down because you need rest anyway you need to sit down and nurture and raise the kid for that time period the child absolutely 100 needs you and they need you all the time the bond need to be created and all kinds of stuff right 
And this is in an ideal situation. Once the kid get old enough where other people can watch it, they're not completely helpless. You know, they've achieved some level of independence, usually in a toddler stage. Then I think, in my opinion, I think it's okay to then have people watch your kids and stuff like that. And then you can, if you want to work again or whatever, then you can. Even though we know different situations are different still. So I wanted to touch the stay at home mom thing because women will say that. And then when men sit them down, they still say that the men are trying to control them through finances by not letting them work. Like, so women are victims either way. And I, that rubs me the wrong way, but that's neither here nor there in this particular thing. Let me, let me move on to what she's really talking about. When she says it's, it is impossible to be a good mom when you're a single mom. Again, we're going back to your focus, not 100% or even 80% being your child. And this, you can, you can kind of see this because a lot of times women are so focused on the maintenance of the child that they don't raise the child. And that's two different things. See, a single mother will tell you that they did a good job because they did a decent job at maintenance. Like they didn't have their child living pillar to post. They was able to provide the essentials for the child, for them to live. The, you know, they was never hungry. They was never homeless. They was never, you know what I'm saying? The child had the things that they wanted. You know, they wasn't struggling for the basics and the necessities and things of that nature. And even sometimes um, they were... Um, thriving in that way, not just on the verge of, you know, uh, um, not just, just on the verge of not having it, but they had a lot of it. Okay. A lot of times women will be like, no, I was a good mom because they, my kids didn't want for nothing, but they fail to account for the emotional portion of the motherhood that actually go missing. And she, this lady may or may not be referring to that, but that's what I'm referring to. That's what I think of when I think of a single mom not being a good mom. It's not that she's necessarily a terrible mom or that she doesn't want to be a mom to her kid. It's just that, that those circumstances play differently for women than they do for men. First of all, because we're not really built for taking on all of the pressure that men take on. Like when you're single, you have to do your own four Ps basically. And as a woman, that doesn't really work because it doesn't really come naturally to you. You have to, you have to, you have to hone the skill, so to speak, in order to even do it halfway decently for you and your child or children that you have. Right. So there's an emotional unavailability, but then there are other emotional factors. When women don't have male leadership, we have a tendency to be over emotional, make emotional decisions. Even when it comes to our children, we won't be, we'll be doing sometimes what we think is best but not necessarily, it won't be the most effective thing. And it may have negative consequences in the relationship between ourselves and our children. That's why a lot of times with single motherhood, the kids grow up and they don't like the mom and the mom can't figure out, well, well I took care of you and I sacrificed a lot for you. So why is it that you don't really rock with me once you got old enough to not need me to take care of you? And it's like, well, yeah, you had us with a roof over our head and everything like that. And we appreciate that part. But at the same time, the emotional other things, because a lot of times the women will take their emotions out on their children and they may not necessarily be abusive, but they'll be too inappropriate. Right. Letting the children know too much about what's going on. So like if she's lonely or she's um, or she's bitter or she, you know, has a disdain for men and that's why she don't really want to be with them. You know, things of that nature. She will reveal these things to her children. She'll have inappropriate conversations. And when I say inappropriate, I don't necessarily mean sexual conversations. I mean, she'll just 
include them in grown folk business. You understand what I'm saying? And the kids grow up in grown folk business. Now she does this for a couple of reasons because she needs them to mature enough or faster so that they can be emotional crushes for her a lot of times. Like she needs them to hold her up emotionally. And at the same time, she's emotionally unavailable to the children for the children's needs. So they hold her up rather than she hold them up and support them emotionally and be able to give them the things that they need from an emotional standpoint from her. You understand what I'm saying? So this is this is this is the trap of the single mother among many different things. But since we're just talking about this particular aspect, I'm going to keep it here. The children don't the children don't grow up with a good balance. And a lot of times it's the emotional imbalance. And when they have an emotional imbalance, that plays out in their adulthood and they, and they may not even know it. They may not even know that they're operating at an emotional deficit. It's a lot of different factors. And I'm going to end it off with this. If chicks realize this, that it's quote unquote so hard to be a single mother, then why do y'all keep doing that? What's wrong with y'all? Why y'all keep doing that? If it's, you know, if it's so difficult and you have all these various difficulties in doing all of this stuff, then what's, <laughs> y'all just think the men are supposed to say, okay, we'll just come marry y'all now. The only reason that's not really happening is because a lot of times in real time, y'all don't be really trying to be the best type of women. Y'all are sitting here talking about we ain't got to be marriage material. Like we ain't got to be married and I don't have to do any of have any of these traits that men say that they want for marriage. Just come get me. Just stop whining about it and come get me. Come marry me. Come be my provider and my protector and all that kind of just come do it. And don't worry about who what I'm doing. Don't worry about what I'm doing. You just do what you're doing. And whether I do you dirty or not, just, just roll the dice and close your eyes and get a surprise. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, Sister Crimson Cure. And this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonite.